Hello there, my name is Mike the Zorch, and this is the Fan Fiction Multiverse Podcast. I do this video every so often to inform people about what stories I'm writing and what new updates to stories will be coming out, mostly for people who follow me on fanfiction.net. I'm also on Google+, but Google+, is going away this year, so I'm moving all of my operations to MeWe. So um, we'll have a link to my profile on MeWe, so you can join there. Also, Gamers Bay and Zort Central will both be there. So that's what we'll be doing, our setting up our communities. We're working on building those up right now. But uh, today I wanted to do a sort of recap of all the stories I'm currently working on and get um, you know, let you know exactly what each one's about, what the premise is. I've been wanting to do a lore series for a lot of these because the settings for some of these, except for the, the Star Wars ones of course, are ones that I'm wanting to write a novel on, I'm wanting to you know, put original characters into them and use these worlds and sort of to flesh out these worlds I'm using this fan fiction to do it uh, with some characters from my favorite anime so let's get into the news uh, the chapter I'm working on right now is the next one for Beneath the Crimson Sky and that one's going to be coming maybe before the end of the month I can't guarantee when I will be able to get chapters done because I'm usually busy with other things but I am, am currently working on that one in fact I was working on it today uh, also I released the latest episode of Nindo the Force that one is out uh, the next episode that is coming the next chapter that's coming will be the beginning of the Battle of Naboo, where Naruto arrives with Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan, Queen Amidala, and they begin the fight to take back Naboo from the Trade Federation. And so that will be uh, an interesting one. I've got some interesting stuff planned for that chapter. So, this, speaking of which, Nindo the Force has been one of my more popular stories I write on fanfiction.net. It is a mesh of, not, not exactly a crossover, but more of a blending of Naruto and Star Wars together. What happens in this story is the abilities of the Shinobi on Naruto's world is actually the Force. What they call Chakra is the Force, but used in a different way. What the inspiration for this was when I was watching the Clone Wars and I saw the Night Sisters. Now, I'd seen something similar to them in a Legends book with Luke Skywalker with these Force Witches. And then the Night Sisters are similar to those but they're, they're canon, and they use the Force, or the dark side of the Force, in a very different way. And then we're, we're seeing different types of Force users. We saw the Bendu in Rebels, and we're seeing different ways of using the Force. Now I thought, you know, what if the people on Naruto's planet evolved a way of using the Force but they didn't know what the Force was. They weren't necessarily Jedi. They weren't using it in that manner. They use two aspects of the Force. They use the Living Force and the Cosmic Force. That's what they call the two aspects of Chakra. And they use it to fuel their ninjutsu. I thought, you know, this would be interesting because the Night Sisters were doing things that were like black magic, but they were using the Force to do it, like bringing the dead back to life and giving Darth Maul his legs back and curing his mind and different things that and doing things that were very magic-like, ritual-like, 
basically making the Force mystical again, whereas George Lucas tried to make it scientific. So that's the premise behind you know what Naruto's people are able to do with their ninjutsu. And this is a story inspired by A Village Hidden in Hope, uh, where the idea of Naruto and Jiraiya get stuck on Tatooine. They end up there as they hid inside what they thought was a building but was actually an ancient ship. They somehow activated it. It took off on autopilot. They ended up on Tatooine. Now they don't know how to get back home. They don't know where their world is. They have difficulty communicating because the teleporting or using the using the ability to uh, send messages back and forth using the toads is extremely difficult, takes a lot of energy. There's going to be an explanation as to why that is. There will be a very good explanation as to why that is uh, in, future, uh, in future chapters. And so they've built a new life out there, helping people on Tatooine, and now that Naruto is getting involved with the Battle of Naboo, he will start making allies outside of Tatooine, outside of that region in the Outer Rim, who start making important allies, and the story will follow the Clone Wars. And there are segments in the story where all the big events have already taken place. You already know the outcome of the overall story arc when you read chapter one. You already know what happens, what the outcome is. It's a radical alteration of the Star Wars tom timeline. So it's a, I, I think it's an interesting story and there's a lot of people who actually do like it, who follow the story. And I try to update it as often as I can. And this is the one I've been really pouring a lot of creativity into, as well as the next story I'm going to talk about. This is what I've been doing is I have been writing a main story, and I've been doing a side story for each one. And the side story for Nindo the Force is Outer Rim Redemption. This story takes place a thousand years before the events of Nindo the Force. A thousand years before the Clone Wars, back during the very beginnings of the Republic. When the Old Republic collapsed, when the war between the Jedi and Sith finally ramped down, the, when the Sith were believed to be extinct and, and Darth Bane and his apprentice went into hiding. This happens around that time. And it centers on Ranma because Earth, our Earth, and Naruto's world are two different worlds in the same universe. And so Ranma was on Earth and events take place where... Ranma and his father, escaping from Shampoo, run into something they should never have run into. And it alters Ranma's life. He ends up isolated from Earth, out in deep space. Horrible things happen to him that reshapes his life. And he spends the rest of his life out in the Outer Rim trying to redeem himself for the things that he's done. Basically, this is a Ranma recovering from being a Sith story. And this is going to be a pretty emotional one, pretty dark one. Um, there will be some characters from Ranma half in it. Akane's not going to be there. None of the Tendo sisters will be there. Kuno's not going to be there. There is one character that will be there. Uh, maybe two. But there is at least one character that will be there. And this is not going to be your typical Ranma half story arc uh, for for this story. This is going to be a darker story. This is an older Ranma. This is Ranma uh, in his late 20s, early 30s. And he is just coming off from being a Sith. He is a bounty hunter in the Outer Rim. 
and it's a tumultuous time in history. It's the it was the end of the Sith war with the Jedi. It was the beginning of the Republic, and I think this is going to be a really interesting, really dark, really emotional story. And I'm putting a lot of creativity behind this, and I hope that you like it. I I have the very first chapter out now it's readable on fanfiction.net the link to my fanfiction.net page will be in the description below i'm really excited about this one uh, because it lets me explore some dark dark themes and you know raw emotions with the characters beneath the crimson sky is something that i started on a whim I thought, you know, what would happen if Ronma became a vampire? And so I thought about it, and I was a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. I wasn't, I did not like Twilight, but I liked a lot of the books from Anne Rice, and I read Dracula, the original novel Dracula. It's very, very different from what you would expect and I thought you know I also played the Vampire the Masquerade games and I thought you know I'd like to create my own vampire mythos my own vampire world you know I saw how vampires are depicted in anime and in other movies and I thought you know I'd like to create my own vampire mythos my own world that is filled with you know people and supernatural beings and different factions and groups and I came up with the idea of the Crimson Circle which was founded by a missionary who had become a vampire and who chose to use his powers for good rather than evil and so they are vampires who fight for good who fight to protect people and Ronma is a member of that group. And I've been working on building up the lore, world building, for this series in order to use the setting for a series of novels. And I will be putting you know, original characters into these, into these novels. Uh, right now, I don't have anything written. Right now, I'm just exploring the ideas with this story right now exploring the world building ideas for this before i start actually putting anything down on paper or typing anything out really so it's a it's a complex world i am wanting to you know build it up and craft it right i don't want it to be clichéic or make it seem like I'm trying to mimic something else that's been out there for a while. I wanted to create something that's a little bit unique, a little bit interesting, and I think I've, I think I've come up with something here for that. Uh, there are different types of vampires. There is the Anosferat, the Revenants, and then there's the Vampire, which are the primordial vampires, the ancient vampires. Uh, I'm bringing in some crossovers from Dance of the Vampire Bund, which is one of my favorite anime, and bringing in Mina Tepes, and I'll also be bringing in Akira eventually to the story. It'll be in book three, which will finish out the trilogy arc for this for this story and also I'm, I just introduced some other new characters Baron and Arya to to the story and they have a side story called The Promise and Baron and Arya come from another world called Glenmora and their world was taken from them in an invasion and Baron is the king of the Villa Fae or better known as fairies 
you know, fairies aren't these little creatures. They're the same size as humans. They look like humans. In fact, they, they could be mistaken for Japanese or Chinese. They do have wings, but the wings are more of a manifestation of their soul, of their, of their mystical power. And so they can call upon them at any time. They're not a physical part of their body, but it it uh, is an interesting way of creating their wings. They can create weapons from this energy, swords, bows that was already seen in a uh, in an ep in a chapter of Beneath the Crimson Sky. The promise is the backstory behind. Baron and Arya and how they came to be where they're at now in Beneath the Crimson Sky. It's not their origin story of how uh, Glenmora, what, how, how the kingdom of Glenmora was betrayed and taken over, but uh, I may go back and do that story, um, beginning with, you know, Baron as a child growing up in Glenmora with the goddess Arya. But this is more, you know, how these two, how their relationship has reached the point where it is now in Beneath the Crimson Sky. The promise is the foundation upon that relationship between the two. It's a little bit like Dance in the Vampire Bund, uh, where, they're, where they sort of have feelings for each other, but they know that they can't. Um, do anything about those feelings. It's sort of a tragic love story in a way. So I, that was a little bit of a uh, <laughs> that was a little bit of a spoiler there. But it's going to be an emotional story. It does involve love Hina in an interesting way. And I have the first chapter of this story up on fanfiction.net right now. And um you know, I urge you to check it out and uh, let me know what you think about it. Something Hentai This Way Comes. This is a play off of a Jason Robards film that I actually liked from the 80s. Something Wicked This Way Comes. I mean, actually, it'll, that was a pretty interesting movie. I liked that movie. And so this is a play on the name. And I have... A chapter up right now that is the start of what it originally was going to be and I haven't been able to continue it because I just I want to be able to write the story the way I want to write it but there are limitations to how far I can take things on fanfiction.net and I'm not ready to put this up on adult fanfiction uh, .net. Now, I've, I have written adult stories before. I've written one, so quite a long time ago, A Lemon, and it was the only one I ever wrote. But I was wanting to push the boundaries of what you can do on fanfiction.net, and I saw one story that really does push it. Really, really does push the boundaries. And it's, it's still up there. It is... Um, I forget the name. Uh, I'd have to go look it up, but it's a story where Ranma falls into the spring of, you know, of what do you call it? Um, oh, the word is right on the tip of my tongue. Nymphomaniac. It's spring, a spring of nymphomaniac, and you know, and it's it is absolutely hilarious. And I wanted this to be something of a comedy, but also something more serious to, more drama to it. And there will be a little bit of, there will be actually a lot, quite a bit of Negama in this story as well. Because I wanted to do another story where Ranma got stuck as a girl again. I, I seem to do those stories a lot. I kind of like those stories. I mean, I'm no SJW, but I kind of like those stories. But... I thought, you know, since I'm going to have something around that, around that theme, why not merge the two instead of creating more and more stories where basically I was inundated before with stories before, 
when I was writing them and wasn't able to get all of them updated, I thought, you know, why don't I do that? Why don't I integrate the two? And so that's what I'm going to do. Eventually, that's going to happen. Uh, this one, I don't want to spoil anything, but Ranma didn't fall into the spring of drowned girl this time. He fell into a very different spring. Turn, still turns into a girl, but he's something completely different. And it's just going to be a wild ride. It's going to be pushing some envelopes. And now it's not going to be excessively graphic. I'm not going to be writing a lemon. This is going to be... Um, it's the difference between the kind of raunchy you would see in regular network TV compared to Game of Thrones. It's not going to be like that. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting, interesting story. Now that has a side story, WTF. And WTF is an existing story that I have one chapter out for right now and have not updated it in a long time. And it's finally going to get a chapter. Um, when I when I get the first chapter of something Hentai This Way comes, finally, when that finally surfaces, um, I'm hoping to have that out soon. Then I will do the next chapter to WTF. Now, WTF is a Naruto-centric story. It's set in the same world. And the idea I have there is... Okay, so... Something Hentai This Way Comes is an alternate universe to Beneath the Crimson Sky. It's similar universe the same kind of factions and vampires and other creatures are in it. And I thought, you know, what happens 10,000 years later? How does the world change? Was there some kind of cataclysm or war or destruction or, or something? And the world changes and humanity rebuilds and the elemental nations come up out of this in the Asian region and Naruto's people in the land in the in the uh, fire country and Konoha develop shinobi develop the type of shinobi that are in it this is not related to Nindo the Force in any way these this is normal um, these are normal shinobi as per their lore but uh, the characters from something hentai this way comes are in it it is 10,000 years in the future but there are reasons why they would still be there and that will be in the lore of the story well, I think this is going to be an interesting one uh, again pushing the envelope this is going to be sort of a um, this is also part of an idea that I had on another forum uh, where I just did a little one-off story of Naruto being given this book by Jiraiya and it turns him into this ultimate playboy and he just wreaks havoc throughout the village just pleasuring girls everywhere and just basically taking over the village it's it's it it's, was hilarious it got a lot of laughs people really liked it and I, I don't go to that form anymore because it was just, it's chalk full of just some angry, uptight people who are basically canon cops. Where if you do anything outside of canon, it just triggers them like an SJW. And so I, I had to get away from that. I, I don't visit that form anymore. I, I want to find a good place talk fan fiction with people who write fan fiction but that group I just can't go there anymore because every time I try to talk about anything they just scream and yell and like an SJW at you and all you get is insults and screams and you know I can't 
really discuss anything there. They have their own little um, circle jerk going on that they do. And I thought, you know, I can't explore the kind of story ideas I want to do in in that environment. And so I'm I've been still looking for a good environment where I can discuss fan fiction with people. I've got some future ideas, future uh, stories in mind. In fact, when I merged two stories together, I'm this is I've done it again where I've taken two ideas and I've sort of merged them together. One story idea I was thinking of was one of Ranma being a vigilante hero, sort of like Batman, and it's set in the DC universe. And so um, something happens with with the Tendos, and it triggers Ranma to become a vigilante, and he starts kicking the Yakuza out of Nerima, and eventually gets the attention of the police and starts working with the police the way Batman does in getting the Yakuza out of the city. Sort of has a Batman sort of arrangement set up with the police chief in the, in the area. And I thought of a story like that. And there was also another story I had an idea of where Bruce Wayne was not, was Ranma's father. Where before Nodoka married Genma, she was in a relationship with Bruce Wayne, but her family didn't approve. And they forced her to marry Genma. And before before the uh, wedding, on their last night together, she and Bruce make love. And, you know, months later, she gives birth to Ranma. But she thinks the child belongs to Genma. But then, while they're gone on, a, on their training trip, she's cleaning house, finds a loose floorboard, pulls it up, and finds some papers that he hid from her medical records that basically show because of a injury that occurred while he was on his own training trips with Haposai, he is unable to father a child, which tells her, oh my god, this child that I carried, Ranma, he isn't Denma's, he's Bruce Wayne's. And so years later, she's reunited with, with Ranma, finally, and Bruce Wayne comes to Japan to, um, one excuse to bring him to Japan is that he's bringing, he's bringing a historic sword back to Japan to, you know, give it to the Prime Minister so it can be put in a museum, some, uh, an important one, maybe a Musa, maybe a, a Musashi sword, which are very, which is, who is a very famous samurai and swordsmith. Maybe he had an original sword from him and he brought it back to, brought it home. And Nodoka finds out and she makes an arrangement with a friend that works at a hotel where Bruce is staying and she uh, comes up as the um, person for room service and meets Alfred. And Alfred remembers her and they just, they talk things over. He calls up Bruce who's out as Batman looking for uh, maybe some villains from... from um, Gotham City have come to Tokyo for some reason, and he's there to, he's really there to investigate why. And that was another story that I had. And so I decided, you know, why not mesh the two? You know, where he was the son of Bruce Wayne, and he goes off and he does, and he becomes his own vigilante, and eventually he discovers, the, oh, Hey, I'm the son of Batman. And so it, it it was in his blood all along to do this. You know, and it, uh, bringing in the Justice League members because I I like the Justice League. I mean, I thought I thought the Justice League film was okay. I didn't think it was great. Uh, but I thought it was okay. It was actually pretty good. It would be better. It would have been better. If each of the characters had gotten their own movie to flesh them out the same way the characters in the MCU did 
but Warner Brothers wanted to capitalize off of you know the success that Marvel was having and they wanted it they wanted their cake and eat it too and they moved too quickly and you know it also didn't help that they made Batman vs. Superman way too serious way too dark they should have had a lot more humor in it uh, so Uh, just wanted to say thanks for listening. I am on MeWe right now because Google Plus will be shutting down. Also, Gamers Bay is on MeWe. And so you, there will be a link in the uh, description below to my profile on MeWe. And you can find Gamers Bay there. And my, my uh, profile there is under Resort Central. And I'm in a variety of different uh, anime groups there on MeWe. You'll be, you'll be able to find me hanging out there every once in a while and posting some images and, and discussing things with people. So head on over and uh, take a look at it. Uh, I want to thank you again for watching this uh, episode. I'm looking to make a lore episode that will go more into depth into a lot of things I was talking about that may take me some time to come up with so until next time I've been Mike the Zorch and I'll see you guys later <laughs>